Welcome back to the program. You know, there's an interesting dynamic in the Republican presidential primary race is, is one of what was the more promising campaign seems to be in this rebuilding phase. And another somewhat unknown candidate is now rising in popularity and becoming more of a household name. There's Ron DeSantis, Kevin, of course, in the midst of a reset. And uh, he's let go of a number of his staff. And then you got Vivek Ramaswamy, who is doing pretty well in the polls. For so long, Tom, it was just Trump to Santa's, Trump to Santa's, Trump to Santa's. The Santa's, hey, he's on the struggle bus, and maybe it's just temporary, but it's allowed others to step in and be noticed. Tim Scott's raising money like crazy, and Vivek Ramaswamy, he's flooded social media with a message that seems to be resonating with a lot of people. Uh, can they make a move, or does none of it really matter with Donald Trump in what seems to be a runaway train that doesn't slow down no matter how many times he's criminally charged? Uh, Joining us now is Rashini Rajkumar, political strategist, attorney, and host of the podcast, The Crisis Files. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, guys. Great to be with you. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. What, what, do, you, what do you think of, of Ron DeSantis' situation? Is this just a, a shuffling of staff that happens from time to time, or is he possibly in real trouble? Well, you know, it could go both ways. We are still pretty far out from the 2024 election. Obviously, this first debate is coming up in August. But the thing with DeSantis, and I've said this on your show before, if he just goes back to what helped him be what many consider a great Florida governor, getting Florida through the pandemic, actually helping Florida to thrive, you know, and then that little hurricane, you know, all the hurricane relief. I mean, all of those big headlines were really a lot of people were giving him credit for being a great leader. I don't know where that guy went because the current guy seems to be a little too focused on Trump, a little too focused on some things that are so far right that they're not going to win him any votes from moderate. So it doesn't seem completely unusual. It's just a bad headline when, you know, however many staffers, 28 staffers, a third of your force, you decide to say bye bye to. Although if you look a little deeper, it sounds like it just got too expensive. You know, you've got to watch your money. Also, this is a long haul. You're you're a media expert. Is this something that the media built him up and then is tearing him down and he's maybe not changed that much how he is? Or is he making these missteps and, and forgetting about uh, what was so likable about him is was how great Florida did during the pandemic? You know, I think it's a little of both, Kevin, because some of it, you know, especially some of the teaching of black history, I think some of that narrative, the media, some media will take the worst case scenario part of the sentence and make that the headline. And then those who aren't as discerning just assume a certain thing and they don't read more deeply into all the literature that out that's out there and what appears to be the reality of the, what's happening in Florida schools. So I think that sometimes the media will be a runaway train with something that just seems very salivating and anti DeSantis, but then sometimes he's also his worst enemy. So he's got to be smart. He can't get cocky. And really, no matter what, whether you're talking politics, life, whatever, hubris always loses the day. So mm-hmm. you've got to have some humility and you've got to just take it day by day, state by state. All right. So do you think it comes across with maybe a little bit too much hubris, uh, some some arrogance in his messaging? And if, and if so, how does he change that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably his problem right now. And maybe he's just so serious and I have no idea if he's an introvert or an extrovert, but, you know, sometimes people that just want to get stuff done, they're really thought not to be the life of the party. I mean, one headline I saw the other day was the problem with Ron DeSantis is Ron DeSantis. So, I mean, I don't know if he has to go on a nice guy tour or if we have to see him, you know, out running or kissing babies. I don't know what it is, but his people need to help give him optics that make him seem more like a guy that you could just go up and talk with. And isn't, he's not going to bite your head off if you disagree with him. Mm. He, he does need a little bit of an overhaul on his public image. Well, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is not afraid to go on uh, what he might can, some might consider enemy media outlets. He's, he's made, made himself available to all networks and all local uh, news outlets as well. And ha- has that been what is uh, allowing him to surge more in the polls and maybe one day uh, surpassing Ron DeSantis? Or is it just his likability factor or is it his knowledge or is it all of the above? Well, I mean, for someone who's, what, around 37 years old, he's pretty impressive, multimillionaire. You know, he's got money to spend, money to burn on his own campaign. But what I would say as someone who's a lover of the Constitution and, you know, watching all of this stuff with you guys, you've got to read up about 
each of these candidates. So I was reading a little more about Vivek. And, you know, he wants to abolish the FBI, the IRS. Okay, you can say these things, but what's your plan for afterwards? So I am not saying he's too young to be president. Certainly I'm not saying that. But if you're going to say some of these wild statements, I really want some kind of game plan. What would you do then? Who would you put uh, on the bench or, or in your administration? Look, I'm excited. He's a South Asian man. That's a huge thing for someone who comes from my part of the world. But you you also can't just be riding kind of both lines because he is also trying to appeal to the Donald Trump voter. Uh, and he's also had a lot of backstory with Donald Trump. So at the end of the day, Vivek has to show us who he really is. He can't hide behind big quotes. He's got to give us some meat, as they say. Mr. Nice Guy Tim Scott has more money than any other candidate other than Trump. Is, is he a possible president or is he more of a VP? You know, that he is such a nice guy, isn't he? And, and you know, depending on the line, do nice guys really end up winning? I don't know. Often they get the girl. Let's see what happens with Tim Scott. I think Tim Scott has to show us he is serious. He's got a game plan. He's got policy advice. And to all of the Republicans, my recommendation from a strategy standpoint is you can't bring up Donald Trump in the different sentences. You've got to stand up on your own two feet and on your own platform. Well, he is going after Lady Liberty, so maybe he'll win this uh, thing, being, being the nice guy that he is. One final uh, mm-hmm. question regarding Ron DeSantis. Um, the $20 million he raised in the second quarter, that's quite a bit of, you know, a big chunk of change there, but a lot of it's almost gone. Uh, and a lot of these donors cannot donate again. They've, they've met their maximum already. Is he in trouble financially? Yeah, I think the finance piece is really why we're seeing this shakeup. Uh, and it's, you know, it's probably partly about some of the decisions those staffers made, but more about the money. He absolutely does, has to tighten the purse strings and figure out where do we go uh, after the new money. There's some new stuff happening. You know, there's some headlines right, lately about crypto donations will be allowed in some places. Uh, the, uh, you know, various forms of online payments, which would make it easier for some smaller donors. So, We'll, we'll have to see, and I think he's just got to keep on being that guy that gave him the national platform. You know, that Ron DeSantis that we found out about Ron DeSantis because he was doing some positive things in Florida, and that's what he has to channel, that part of himself, and he will come back. I mean, you know, there's a lot of time until November 2024. All right, let's talk about Donald Trump. He continues to be in the lead, it seems, no matter what. Uh, does he go on the debate stage with these folks or does he just let them battle it out and maybe hold his own rally on that night and see if he can outdraw them? That's a great prediction as to what he will do (laughs) His hold his own rally. I would like to see him debate. I would like to really see the American people deserve to see, and especially all these people that continue to support Trump. They need to see, well, what's new? What is he going to say now? How does he stack up against these opponents? And if he really feels like he's the one, he should not be worried about debating anyone who is currently against him or comes out of the woodwork later. Well, they're coming up. The debates are on August 23rd, and we'll keep talking about this for sure. We appreciate your time as always. Roshini Rajkumar, political strategist and host of the Crisis Files podcast. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.